guys, welcome to the Everett Silver Show. We have excited guests as we do every week. And so I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm always bringing it to you. So thanks so much for staying in tune with us. Stay connected. You're watching the Everett Silver Show. Dr. Paul, Hello, thank you so much for doing the show. How are you doing, sir? Thank you. I'm doing fine. Thank you for having me. You are so Well, what a pleasure to have you. Well, folks, my guest is with us. Every uh, animal's favorite vet is now seeing new patients. And uh, I caught up with Dr. Jan Paul here, our new series, uh, National Geographic Wilds uh, fan favorite. The incredible Dr. Paul is here with us. And so, Dr. Paul, let's talk about the, uh, the, the, the show because I'm telling you, everybody's glued to the set. Well, the show has been now going on for 19 seasons, and this is the 10th year already. So it's not something that I envisioned would be this popular, but I'm very happy that we are making so many people happy. I think this is just unbelievable that, yeah, the people love to see us helping animals. And speaking about love, uh, your, your love for animals, I mean, you've been doing it a while. What, where does that drive come from? I don't know. I was born and raised on the dairy farm in the Netherlands, and we had all kinds of animals. And I always liked to work with animals. You know, I grew up with the St. Bernard, and right now we still have, you know, four dogs and four cats in the house, and we love them all. <laughs> now, Dr. Poe, when you get uh, calls, I mean, you know, you, you've gone from one extreme to major car accidents to you know, uh, I guess uh, around the clock, just uh, whatever is happening, critical care. Uh, have you ever seen anything that's alarming to you? And uh, because not only that, you got to look after the pet, you, you got to consider the pet owners, correct? Also, of course. And this is what I'm looking at because you know, if there's accidents, you try to do the best you can. And one of the strange things is just recently somebody brought it in a dog that actually went through a rototiller and had tremendous wow. big wounds all over. And yes, we just started, you know, putting all the things back together. And it's about six weeks ago, and the dog is running like he never was hurt. And this is what I like about animals. You know, they are so resilient. And you just give them half a chance to get better than they do. But the main thing is, yes, the people sometimes don't know it if an animal is sick. And many times you see an animal that is, is almost too far gone uh, before you can help them. And uh, that all the, it's, it's sometimes harder to do. And it, you have to think about the animal and make sure that you know, this animal can be back to a normal, you know, pain-free life. And I think this is the main thing that I do for the owners also. And it's it's something that I really enjoy. Now, Dr. Paul, you, you were, while you were talking, something hit me interestingly enough that do you think some of the pet owners, do they do you think they take too long? Are they getting there? Do you see some neglect on getting their shots or their regular routines and checkups mm. to, to add to the problems? Yes, yeah. yeah, sometimes. But don't forget, the animal will not tell you if anything is wrong. And right, right. because they accept it, you know, so yes, you have to be in very much in tune with your pet in order to find out, hey, something is wrong. And a case in point was many, many years ago, this guy takes his uh, dog hunting and the dog hits the step, jumping in the truck and you could, he could see that something went wrong and he brings the dog in right away and I find that there was a, a tumor in the belly. And it says, okay, I'm gonna do surgery right now. So I put him in the operating room and it was a splenic tumor that was probably the size of a baseball, no bigger than that, was a softball that had broke. And yes, at that time when it's broke, you can't do anything. But the guy never knew that anything was wrong because this dog didn't feel any pain. And this is the hard thing where you, you know, don't realize something is going on with your dog because they hide it. Yeah, that is, that is always so, so amazing. But now, Dr. Cole, you have, you know, over 50 years of experience uh, uh, as a veterinarian. Uh, have, have anything last minute, uh, uh, just to ask you, anything that surprises you now? Anything that's what? 
Does anything now surprise you? Yeah. You know, there's always surprises. <laughs> and that's the fun part of my job because you never know what comes through. The main thing right. is don't get alarmed. Common sense. Do the best you can and help the animal. And what better gratification than to know uh, you, you've, um, you've helped the animal. Well, folks, I want to make sure you tune into the incredible Dr. Poe air Saturdays, 9 p.m. on National Geographic Wow. And, and Dr. Poe, any last minute thing you want to say? What a pleasure to have you. Thank you very much. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. Well, guys, uh, thanks so much for tuning into the Everett Silver Show. Stay tuned. Don't turn that dial because we got more exciting guests right here on the Everett Silver Show. Be back in a moment. Everett. Hi. Well, thank you guys so much for doing the show. I'm so excited to have you. Well, folks, I'm so excited. Known by millions of YouTube personality models and comedians, the McClure twins can now add authors to their resume. And with their the <laughs> debut picture book, uh, The McClure Twins Make It Fashion, I have the wonderful privilege of talking to kid influencers Ava and Alexis McClure and their mom, uh, content creator Ami McClure, is with us all about their new book, you know, embracing what makes them similar and different. Guys, welcome to the Average Silver Show. Hello. Hi. Thank you for having us. Thank you. You are so welcome. Well, listen, Mom, I got to start with the, the twins first because I know, wh what was it like? One of my first questions always probably would be, what was it like to, uh, and I start with you, Ava, to look like your sister, Alexis? Well, I'm going to say this is the last. Well, I well, it's really normal because it's not like we changed, like first we were born and then we changed to be twins in a few days, but because it's just normal, it's not really, can I, it's not really right. like a big, right. like a big, big deal to be twins right now because it's just, we've been twins our whole life, so it's, we don't really think right. it's any different than being like, oh, well, she doesn't have a twin. Yeah. Uh, now, now, Alexis, I found out in your book, sometimes I know you guys do a lot of things that are similar, but do you, when you think in terms of fashion, who, who, who normally between the two like to determine what you wear? Well, Ava does not like matching. Speak up. Well, Ava does not like matching at all. Yeah, Ava does not like matching anymore. <laughs> She's always copying me. She's always copying you with that. Well, Mom, now, I know, uh, Ami, you, you are the um, content creator. And talk about the, the new book, uh, The McClure Twins Make It Fashion. Talk about the content and how important to learn. I know that in life there's some similarities to all, all of us, but there's some differences as well. Talk about that. Yeah, you know, we, we really thought it was important to put out this book because, you know, the girls are on social media and people are watching them. And I've seen comments in recent times of, you know, oh, why are they not dressing the same anymore? Or, oh, that picture would be better if you dressed them exactly alike. And, you know, I just got to the point thinking that, you know, they're they're no longer three and two years old and they have their own minds and their own personalities. And it's important that we let them be individuals. Their Their, their life is not just the twins. So it's important that people know that, yes, they are twins. They happen to be identical, but they are Ava and Alexis. They have two personalities. They like two different things at times. Even if they buy something the same, they don't want to wear them at the same day. So I just want people to know, like, it's okay. Like, and they, they're still sisters who mostly get along. <laughs> nah. um, but yeah, that's really the whole, the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, that, that, that's fine because that, that talks, you know, it speaks to the, th to, you know, the differences. It speaks to things. Uh, but now talk about because the kids have been doing stuff since age three, right? I mean, I, I remember them uh, today's show, Good Morning America. Who, who, yeah. when you think in terms of what's this is idea that you saw something special early on? Um, yeah, you know, they went from one day being extremely shy and hiding behind me to jumping out and saying, hey, everybody. So it really just like seemed to snap overnight that they 
became, I don't know what the opposite of shy is. They just became super gregarious, would speak to anyone for too long at times. Like I have to tell them like, girls, let's go. We have things to do. The and opposite it, of shy is not shy. Yeah. So they just became <laughs> these like beams of light who just love talk. Like if you ask them now what their favorite thing is, they're going to say, yeah, we love to talk. And I don't know what that is, but I was like, we got to let them do it. <laughs> Now, now I notice, uh, uh, and then back to 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 the twins for just a moment. Uh, you have this new book out. Are you excited? I, I love the cover of it, and I, I've also had the privilege of looking through. Uh, are you excited about your new book? Yes, yes, we are, we are very excited. <laughs> it came it came out on on the twenty ninth, and yeah, so everybody can get it now. Yes, <laughs> we got it. Yeah, well, we definitely want to let the audience know the McClure Twins uh, Make It Fashion is available everywhere. Harper, uh, HarperCollins.com. Uh, I know you can go for further information as well, but the book is yes. available. And I, uh, uh, I, I let the uh, twins say something to us just to promote a little bit and just welcome everybody. And then, Mom, close us out. And, guys, it's such a pleasure to have you on, on the show today. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a nice day. No, so you girls can talk about what you want to talk about with the book. Like, what do you want to tell me about your book? Okay, well, our book is about fashion, and mm -hmm. it's mostly about... I'll let you talk for it. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, I will. Um, oh, it's my gosh. It's really about fashion, that twins can be the same and different. So, so it's about... Some twin people think twins have to be the same like all the time. They have to have the same color, same clothes. They have to wear the same thing, same bedroom. It's just all the same things. But that's not true. It's really about the twins don't have to be the same, and they but could they be the still same get along. and different, and they still can get along longer. Oh, that's awesome. That is so awesome. And I want to encourage you to tell me how much you've been influenced to other young kids that are inspired to do what they enjoy to do. Do you, do you didn't hear what he said? Because they were too busy arguing with each other. <laughs> <laughs> and Could then, you repeat uh, your question? Yeah. No, I'm just saying that. No, I, I just said I have just wanted to thank them for being such an inspiration to other kids Uh you know that they can do something like they're doing to to inspire them to 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 be inspired to do what they enjoy doing and make a living from it. So, guys, thank yeah. you for what you no, do. I tell them and all the uh, time. You know, kids look up to you guys because they realize that oh, I can be myself and and have fun and and make a living at what it is I love to do. Like yeah. I love to draw. Yeah. I love exactly. to play that job. I love to cook. Okay. I love. All right. Okay, Alexis. Okay. All right, Ava and Alexis. Also, you make sure you give mom a kiss and dad uh, for because they they're really uh, the inspiration as well. They they've put a lot in, into you guys and Miss and Omni. Thank you so much for what you've done and to inspire them as a parent and have that parental thank involvement you. so important nowadays. Thank you. I even broke my wrist for them, as you can see. Oh wow. <laughs> Well, everybody, make sure, again, the McClure Twins Make It Fashion is available right now. You can go pick up their new book, HopperCollins.com uh, is who has it everywhere. And, again, I want to thank the speakers of have Ava, Alexis McClure, as well as Mom, Ami McClure. Thank you guys for doing the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. You're so welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Hey, Mr. Everett, how are you? Gail, thanks for doing the show. Dr. Lally, how are you doing, sir? Hey, Everett, I'm well. How are you? I'm doing great. Well, folks, I'm so excited to have special guests with us. Uh, uh, I'm glad to tell you that um, when you think in terms of uh, this world-renowned track star, three-time Olympian gold medalist, also nine-time world champion, Gail Devers is on the phone with us. We've got to talk about some of the hurdles living with grave disease as well as symptoms of uh, thyroid uh, eye disease as well. How possibly could that be related? Also, Dr. Gary uh, Lelly is here with us, who is an ocular uh, plastic surgeon, Wells Car uh, Cornell Medicine there at New York City. 
want to thank them again for being with us. Gail, let me start with you. Tell us more about your experience with uh, Graves' disease as well as the thyroid eye disease as well. Well, I'm glad, you know, every day you said a hurdle that I had to get over because this was a big hurdle. You know, my career was taking off in 1988 and the bottom fell out. I mean, plain and simple. It took two and a half years. I could not run. I was sidelined, trying to train, couldn't. I was struggling from debilitating, you know, uh, symptoms like extreme weight loss. My weight was supposed to be 120. I got down to 79 pounds. I lost my hair. I was constantly fatigued, but yet I had insomnia and couldn't sleep. And I also had eye symptoms. And for almost three years, this went on. And then I finally got diagnosed with Graves disease. And I'm like, okay, great. I'm getting my life back on track. Or so I thought, you know, for these right. years, it's been 30 years now. And what I thought with my eye symptoms, I had bulging eyes. I, I, I still have redness and pain and sensitivity to light. I thought these were part of my Graves disease. And what I recently discovered is that I have thyroid eye disease, which is separate from my Graves disease, but related. So it needs to have a separate care. It, it, it's, it's the worst part is not knowing. Yeah, I was about to ask you, Gail, because I know, talk about, though, I know the impact, though. Uh, I know you, th this had to have impacted your life, though, in such a way. I mean, think about as an athlete, I was put on hold, Yeah. you know, and, yeah. you know, I, I know the struggles of, of not knowing the, the hardest part was not having an answer and thinking that I was crazy. I couldn't stand the way I looked in the mirror. I covered my blinds, covered my mirrors because I couldn't stand that skeletal person that was looking back at me and I didn't have any answers. And I always tell people, I'm supposed to be a sprinter. I want to get to the finish line fast. And I wasn't able to right. do that. And, you know, Horizon Therapeutics has joined me in this mission, you know, with Dr. Lely to make sure that we get people to the finish line. So they educate themselves and they understand. And we're telling people, if you have Graves' disease, pay attention to your eye health so you can get your life back on track. Absolutely. Now, um, Dr. Lely, July we know is Graves uh, Disease Awareness Month, but up to the, the stats that scares you, uh, up to 50% of people, though, may be developing but may be related to this condition called thyroid eye disease. First of all, Dr. Lely, tell us what is TED and some of the symptoms and who is more likely to develop the condition? Sure. So you're right. You know, Graves' disease uh, is, a, is an autoimmune condition of the thyroid gland. Um, in a separate condition that occurs in up to half of patients with Graves' disease is thyroid eye disease or TED. This is an autoimmune problem, an inflammatory problem that happens around the eyes and in the eye socket, the area behind the eyes. And what happens is that inflammation causes swelling of the muscles and the fat behind the eyes. The eyes bulge out of the eye sockets. Um, that creates discomfort and pain. The eye muscles are swollen and inflamed and in some cases develop scarring in them and that creates difficulty with movement of the eyes and the eyes lining up correctly. So about half of patients with TED will develop double vision, seeing two images instead of one. And then the eyes can dry out and become very red and irritated. The vision can become blurry. In its worst forms, it can actually cause frank vision loss. Um, and so the types of patients that get this are most commonly patients who have Graves' disease, much more common in women than men, and more common in smokers. Uh, but I would say that patients with any sort of thyroid imbalance, including things like Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, um, or even regular thyroid levels can develop TED. So you want to be mindful of any changes that you experience with the eyes, any of those symptoms I mentioned, or even just a change in the appearance of the eyes, because that's sometimes the first way people notice it. And if you think you might need to see a specialist, don't hesitate. You can find a specialist uh, at a, a website, uh, focusonted.com. That'll get you to a specialist in your area to get baseline screening and, and uh, evaluation. And, and then, Dr. Lely, lastly, uh, can, is, is it hard to detect or diagnose TED? And then what you mentioned, doctors, are there special type doctors uh, that will kind of, you know, treat TED? Yes. So um, the diagnosis sometimes can be very subtle. Uh, the disease presents in a multitude of ways, and some patients will have just one small symptom, and other patients will have 
many, many symptoms of the disease and it'd be quite obvious. The good news is that the specialists that take care of the disease are uh, trained and very comfortable in even diagnosing the most subtle cases and also managing the more severe cases. And those types of specialists are what I do, oculoplastic surgeons or neuro-ophthalmologists. Again, that website will point you to people in your area. It also has ways to, to go through a symptom finder and see if you might have some of the symptoms of this disease. You can read more about Gail's amazing uh, story uh, and, and other uh, things there as well. And I got to say, uh, Gail, you know, what, what a pleasure. You got to know, it's such an honor for me to have you on this show. Again, folks, uh, Gail Devers, world-renowned track star, three-time Olympic gold medalist, also nine-time uh, world champion, who's, to, who's, who's really bringing some uh, relevancy to this. And also, Dr. Uh, Gary Lelly, thank you so much for being with us out of the Well Cornell Medicine of New York City there. So thank you guys for doing the show because information is power. Focus on TED is where you want to go. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Everett, for helping us get the word out. You're my rock star. You're part of my relay now. We're passing some information. Thanks, I love that, and thanks so much. I appreciate that so much. Guys, thanks for doing the show. Take care. More guests coming your way. Don't touch that dial. I'll be back in a moment. Known for his role on HGTV's Kitchen, uh, Anthony uh, Carino brings 20-plus uh, years of home uh, improvement experience to the table as he uh, tackles renovation challenges daily across the various personal and professional projects. And he also uh, puts his uh, renovation skills to the test for the first season of The Build and TV series where he uh, transformed a firehouse uh, from the 1800s into some modern-day home. And that's, I'm telling you, that's exciting stuff. And for season two um, of The Build, uh, TV Anthony is uh, also taking viewers alongside with Stone House Renovation in New York, where he now shares uh, his insider hacks for all of the home and renovations, from picking uh, right flooring for your space and also choosing proper HVAC systems for the home. So, uh, with that being said, uh, Anthony, talk about, uh, tell us about this house and what are some of the first steps we need to consider when tackling home renovation. I feel. Yes, sir. Yeah. So uh, standing in the kitchen of my 1960 stone farmhouse up in the Catskill Mountains, uh, this house did not look like this when I bought it. The, uh, the previous <laughs> owner did not follow my instructions. They did not do any planning. They gutted the entire space and then were not able to put it back together. So they put it on the market. And that's where myself and my fiance took over. Yes, we've got it all documented in my series on the build.tv. You can check it out there. Um, but getting right into to, um, some tips on how to avoid a disastrous renovation. So first things first, you've got to identify your goals, your intent, or better said, in my industry, the scope of work. Are we painting a room or are we doing a gut renovation? These are two things that are on the opposite ends of the renovation spectrum. And it's very important to have a clear understanding of what you want to accomplish before you start. Once you have that uh, delineated, then you get into your planning process. And by the way, this is the stuff HGTV completely leaves out and is also the most important thing for homeowners to know. You've got to plan before you start smashing walls and getting into demolition. It's not going to make for a good renovation. So who's the team I'm hiring? Um, what's the design aesthetic going to be for the various rooms? What products am I choosing? Checking uh, lead times. Uh, supply chain is still you know, quite a bit of a mess uh, from the pandemic. We've got to make sure that we understand the product is going to be on time so we don't slow down the labor portion of this thing. And last but certainly not least, have an accurate assessment of your DIY skills. There are things you can do in your home and there are things you should not do in your home. Please, when it comes to plumbing, electrical, and HVAC, you should really hire a professional. Yeah, I was about to ask you that. Tell us about it, why it's so important for the HVAC. Yeah, so for the HVAC in particular, uh, you know, you've got the sizing of the air conditioning and heating equipment, and then you've also got the sizing of the ductwork that carries the air to the various parts of your home. If either one of these things is sized incorrectly, your system is simply not going to operate right. It's going to be loud, clunky, noisy. Uh, it's not going to be energy efficient, and you're going to be essentially throwing money out the window. So for my money, I work with Train. Um, I've been working with Train for my entire career and really for two reasons. Number one, the build quality of their equipment is second to none in the industry. 
And number two, they have a rigorous set of testing standards, which if you want to see some pretty cool stuff, you can check out their Instagram uh, page and they show you where they put their various pieces of equipment to test these things so that when it gets to your house or my house, we know it's going to stand up to the elements. We know it's going to stand up uh, over the test of time. So a couple of components that I spec for my home with my train certified uh, installers, I use the XV20i air conditioner. I use the S9X2 uh, gas furnace for heat. Um, I use the train clean effects air cleaner for my indoor air quality. Uh, it is an incredible filter. It pulls a hundred times more stuff out of the air than a, than a standard one inch filter is gonna, gonna pull out of the air for you. And of course, uh, thermostat, the ComfortLink XL 1050, smart home enabled thermostat that I can run from my phone. Oh, wow. And then, uh, uh, Anthony, talk about uh, what are some of the home design trends that you're seeing right now? Yeah, I mean, you know, one of the things I've seen a lot, again, it comes back to, to the pandemic and everybody being inside for so long over the past year, year plus now. Um, is, is outdoor space. You know, people want to extend the footprint of their home and not everybody can afford to put a renovation on their home. So in order to do that, I'm seeing a lot of great hardscape patios, decks, outdoor living rooms, outdoor kitchens. It's really uh, something that folks are, are focusing on a lot. And again, going back to indoor air quality, it's really top of mind for a lot of people with how much time we're spending indoors. Um, and it's the exact reason that I spec the clean effects for my own home because I have the ability to change over all of the air inside my home in a 24 hour period. That means I'm pulling 99.98% of allergens out of the air. I've got healthy indoor air quality and that means my family is healthy. So much great information you gave us, Anthony. Where did we go? Yeah, so for more on my projects, process products, planning, you can check out the build.tv and for more on the HVAC equipment, you can head over to train.com. Well, again, I want to thank our special guest, uh, HGTV's Kitchen Cut, Anthony Carino. Thank you so much for the great stuff. Thank you. Bye-bye. Sing, get the song